Well, Stuart, I mean, you've got um, obviously lots of things in the pipeline. You haven't actually been able to tell us yet. I mean, when will you be going public with these great ideas you've, you've got and uh, offers? Well, look, not to give you a, a sort of a viewpoint that you might get from, um, you know, a proper celebrity with a PR company, but I can't say too much at the moment. And that's purely because I've had, you know, quite a few offers, some good, some bad. Um, and I'm working my way through um, Then There's a couple of serious leads, a couple of television shows in the UK on national terrestrial broadcasters, etc. So there's some really good opportunities, but there's a lot of things to consider when you're taking up a role. I mean, number one is, is relocation. If it was to be a live show, you'd have to move. And um, there's also, you know, um, the pay which you'd expect to get. There's a lot of negotiations to take place. And given that everyone's only just come back to work after the new year, you know, we're still quite a few weeks away yet from announcing anything publicly. I mean, we, a lot of people remember the Badger from The Apprentice. She didn't win it. Badger or bust. She went on and, and did a fair amount of public speaking, making quite a few thousand pounds per day. Yep. Is, is that also something you see yourself doing? Well, there's absolutely no reason why I can't do public speaking and motivational speaking at the same time. And there's been, you know, even more inquiries to do that kind of thing. And the money is very good. Obviously, you get paid to travel to wherever you're going. You get paid to do the, the talking itself. But, um, you know, I hope there's more um, to me than just sort of earning money. I like to think that I'm spreading my own brand, which it is, um, of sort of message in that, you know, do speak your mind. Don't be worried about what other people think because, you know, that's, that, that is a disease, thinking what other people think and really caring too much about it. Well, you've been obviously nominated and made the man of the year, weren't you? I, I the am the man of the year in the Express. Express, yes. Can you believe they've overlooked so many genuine people? So we've got Gandhi, uh, Barack Obama, you know, he won the Nobel Peace Prize. And, you, uh, know, you, I mean, you're, you're not stupid by any stretch of imagination. I mean, you, you know much. how media works, don't you? I I do. mean, that's the thing, isn't it? You just that's know. why I'm here with the highlights of uh, of ITU people. But you know how to push those buttons, and and that's why I was trying to probe you about that. Yeah. Somewhere behind all this, you knew exactly where you were going. <laughs> with this. You're not the first person to say. I think it was Kate Walsh on Live from Studio Five that suggested it was all an act to get on the television. No, no, it's a fair one. comment. It's absolutely a fair comment um, because you could just act like a complete idiot and get on television, make lots of money. But you know, anyone that knows me, and it's an island. It's a very small island. People know the real me. And I think you'll find before I went on The Apprentice, a lot of people already had their own views on me. So, you know, I am true to myself. Like it or loathe it, I suspect loathe. Anything you've done differently? Nothing. Don't live in regret. Why live in regret? If you do something, you did it for a reason. I said everything I thought on The Apprentice because I believed it. And just because people might not appreciate what I said or don't share my view, it's no point in taking it back. There's no reason not to believe what you said still and regret it. Do you see yourself staying here in the Isle of Man as a base? With all your money? Hey, I've got my... <laughs> it's nothing to do with tax. I've lived here all my life, by the way. And, you know, when the Apprentice press release came out, they were very keen to say it's born in Plymouth. But, you know, I was born in Plymouth, but I've lived here all my life, past six months and time at university. You know, I love the Isle of Man. I'll always be based here because I've got my company here. It started here. It's got Manx customers. Um, but, you know, where I'll physically end up, who knows? I think it very much depends on public opinion. OK. Well, finally, I believe Manx knobs sold out after your little... Manx, Manx knobs, yes, they've been hard to obtain. Um, I actually bought the last few from the local store. Can't find anywhere anywhere else. But um, but you've you, you got mass amount of followers on your Twitter yeah, and your Facebook. Stuart Bags on Twitter, yeah. Um, absolutely, I've got uh, over 21,000 followers now. Um, and that's more than any other candidates ever had. Uh, and I'm not saying they're all following me because they love me. You know, half of them are probably just journalists waiting for me to say something politically incorrect and then put it on the, um, the front of a Sunday red top. But, you know, it's, it's a lot of people. It's a lot of people to share a message to. And, you know, I do regularly give out jars of Manx knobs and Stuart Bags the brand T-shirt on there. So it's a good way of keeping your followers happy. You are so Marmite, aren't you? I mean, you can just see people wow. watching this going, oh, my. You know, I think, you yeah, for sure. I look, I'm looking at you right now, you. You behind the computer screen. Some of you right now will be thinking, what an idiot, right? And to, to you people, I can only apologise, but you've got to believe that what I say is genuinely what I think. And to the other half of you that are thinking, yes, I love you, I love you too. <laughs> okay, will you come back next year, at the end of the year, and tell us how it's all gone? Will you come back? Hey, if I haven't been shot, stabbed, or, uh, or killed, I'll definitely be back. I'll let you know how it's all gone. I'll give you uh, an interview from my TV studio in London. Thank you.